The density of a material is represented with the Greek letter rho. It's the mass per volume, in other words, the number of kilograms there'd be in one meter cubed of that material. In many cases, you have to rearrange this formula to solve for the mass, in which case you get m equals rho times v. If you let a wooden block float in water, you could solve for the mass of the water that it displaces. Just multiply the density of water by the volume of the water that's displaced. The volume of the water displaced will be equal to the volume of the portion of the wooden block that's underneath the water. The density of water is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. The specific gravity of an object is defined to be the density of that object divided by the density of water. If this wooden block has a density of 650 kilograms per meter cubed, you get a specific gravity of 0.65. The specific gravity is useful because it tells you the fraction of the object that's submerged while it's floating in water. In this case, 65% of the block will be below the surface of the water and 35% will be above it. You can find the fraction submerged of this object in a new fluid. Just replace the 1000 with the density of the new fluid. We wouldn't call it specific gravity, but it still gives you the fraction submerged. Pressure is defined to be the force per area exerted on a surface. If you know the pressure, you often have to rearrange this formula to find the total force on a surface. If you consider a surface within a fluid, the weight of the fluid above that surface is going to cause a pressure to be exerted upon that area. To find the pressure within a fluid, you can use the formula rho gh. Rho is the density of the fluid. G is the acceleration due to gravity, and h is how deep you are below the surface of the fluid. We call this the gauge pressure because it's the pressure exerted only by the weight of the fluid. If you take this formula for the gauge pressure and you add to it the atmospheric pressure which also pushes down on top of the fluid, you'll get the formula for the absolute or total pressure. Don't get confused, even though it's the weight of the fluid above a certain depth which causes the pressure, the pressure doesn't only push down, the pressure pushes in from all sides. It doesn't try to push objects down within the water, it tries to crush them from all directions. And actually, the upwards pressure on the bottom of an object is a little bit bigger than the downwards pressure on the top of the object. That's because the bottom of the object's deeper, which means the H is bigger in rho GH. This greater upwards pressure is the reason why there's a buoyant force on objects which are submerged. The pressure in a fluid does not depend on the shape of the container. It only depends on how far you are below the surface of the fluid. Points at equal depth will all have the same pressure for a fluid at rest. If the fluid is moving, you have to use Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation relates the pressure, speed, and height of a fluid moving through a pipe at different points. To use Bernoulli's equation, you should first pick two points within the pipe. P1 refers to the pressure of the fluid at point 1. V1 refers to the speed of the fluid at point 1. You can always choose H equals 0 wherever you want. H1 then refers to the height of the point P1 above the H equals 0 line. P2 refers to the pressure at point 2, V2 the speed at point 2, and H2 is the height at point 2. All the rows in this equation refer to the density of the fluid, which is constant. This equation will hold for any two points within the fluid. Say you had a container filled with water that was open at the top. If you cut a small hole in the side of the container, water is going to flow out with a certain speed. You can solve for the speed of the water using Bernoulli's equation. To use Bernoulli's equation, you always pick two points within the fluid. We'll pick a point at the top of the fluid and a point where the water is flowing out. Since the top of the container is open to the atmosphere, the pressure there is PATM, atmospheric pressure. Also, since the hole in the container is exposing the water flowing out to atmospheric pressure, the pressure at point 2 is also PATM. In fact, any part of a fluid which is directly exposed to the atmosphere has a pressure of PATM. Since the pressure at point 1 and point 2 are the same, we can cross them out. The speed of the fluid at point 1 will be nearly zero if we assume that the water level is not dropping rapidly. We always get to choose the arbitrary point where h will equal zero, so we can choose that at point 2. This makes h2 zero. h1 is going to be the height of the surface level of the water above the point where the water is flowing out. This just leaves us with rho gh equals 1 half rho v squared. The rho refers to the density of the water. You can solve this for the speed of the water and you just get root 2gh. Bernoulli's equation is really just a result of conservation of energy. Because of this, if you drop some water outside of the container at point P1 and used mgh equals 1 half mv squared to solve for the speed of that water when it reaches point 2, you'd get the exact same speed that the water comes out of the hole with. If you consider two points within a fluid that have approximately the same height, the rho gh terms cancel and you get an equation that highlights Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle is counterintuitive. It says that as the speed of the fluid increases in a certain region, the pressure of the fluid in that region decreases. Most people think that the pressure would be largest where the speed is largest, but the opposite is true. If you blow air over a piece of paper, you reduce the downwards pressure on top of the paper. 
This causes the paper to move upwards, not downwards, and it's because of Bernoulli's principle. You often have to use the formula for volume flow rate when talking about Bernoulli's principle. The volume flow rate is defined to be the number of meters cubed per second that flows through a section of a pipe. You can also find the volume flow rate by multiplying the cross-sectional area of the pipe times the speed of the fluid at that point in the pipe. The volume flow rate has to be constant within a pipe. In other words, A1V1 equals A2V2. This is because liquids are incompressible. If the volume flow rate were not constant for a liquid within a pipe, the liquid would have to be building up somewhere within the pipe and that doesn't really happen. Because of this, you could basically assume that for any liquid within a pipe, A1V1 equals A2V2. Careful though, V does not refer to volume, V refers to the speed of the fluid. You can find the buoyant force on an object by using Archimedes' principle. Archimedes' principle says that the buoyant force on an object, Fb, equals the weight of the fluid displaced. Weight is defined to be mg, so the weight of the fluid displaced would just be the mass of the displaced fluid times g. You could rewrite the mass of the displaced fluid as the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid displaced. This gives you the formula rho bg for buoyant force, which is just another way to state Archimedes' principle. Another way to find the buoyant force is by taking the difference between the weight of the object when measured in air and the weight of the object when measured in water. The difference in these weights will equal the buoyant force. Notice that we're talking about weight, not mass. If you took the difference between the mass of the object in air and the apparent mass when measured in water, you'd have to multiply by g to get the buoyant force. 